Welcome back everybody, it's Crazy Welder, and I'm coming at you guys with another video, this time about external GPUs. Now, why external GPUs and why so late into the game, do you ask? Um, you know, as if there aren't so many videos that are done on this already. Well, I figured I'd do something different for, you know, my specific laptop. What I actually wanted to do was build an internal GPU that is going to replace my laptop's DVD drive. Now, a DVD drive or Blu-ray drive is something that's not very frequent on modern PCs, as they're pretty much antiquated at this point. Most people just use a USB stick. But I figured, you know, I'd go into some of the ways that you can build an eGPU today. I'm going to look at different options for you folks and what, you know, makes sense in terms of pricing and as well as also what I'm going to be doing for my specific build. Now, I'm going to get into my build in a different video, but I will go over the parts that I used and basically my methodology for doing it and basically why I did it and so on and so forth. But here's the thing. So you've got a laptop that's, you know, potentially aging, or you've maybe got a gaming laptop that is, you know, relatively new, but just doesn't have the oomph for the latest games, and you want to run something like VR on it, for example, or you want to have a little bit of extra, um, you know, graphics horsepower so that you can do whatever it is that you want to do, uh, be it video editing and be it, you know, some kind of post-production stuff. You just need more horsepower without necessarily spending, you know, another grand or two grand on a gaming specific laptop. We've got a couple of options. The one we've been staring at for a while here is obviously the Razer Core. Now the Razer Core, basically not unlike any of the other USB-C Thunderbolt enabled um, external GPUs is a big case, connects over USB-C and ultimately has this case in which you can put a full length time 16 GPU and get a pretty good overall result. Now this box comes with its own power supply. Um, it costs somewhere in the neighborhood of around 500 bucks. And it's definitely by far not the cheapest solution out there. And again, your laptop does have to support USB-C. And for those of us that are trying to enhance most of our laptops, there's a pretty high chance that you don't have a USB-C port. But this does definitely give you a lot of bandwidth as the USB-C, as we all know, is capable of somewhere north of you know, 40 gigabits per second, which is a pretty decent amount of throughput, all things considered. Now, I might be wrong in that number, but it's somewhere roughly in that ballpark. You know, it is definitely a very, very big figure. Now, there's also this Alienware graphics amplifier for those folks that happen to have an Alienware computer. Unfortunately, they use a proprietary connector, so it's not going to do you too much good in terms of connecting it to your own machine. But we also have these other ones that also happen to support Thunderbolt 3. Now you can take a look at those on your own time, see if they're potentially, you know, something that is useful to you. Um, again, all of them house different power supplies. This one comes with 680 watts and comes in at roughly around 300 bucks. Then there's also the Power Color Devil Box, which again also is running over a USB Type C port, this time with a slightly lower 500 watt power supply. So you're not going to be putting some of the biggest and basically some of the more hungry power GPUs into this thing, but it does indeed work. And again, you know, pricing roughly in the 300, um, you know, mid $300 range. Now you've got another one, which again is this Sonnet um, Thunderbolt 2. Um, external GPU. So it's not going to be quite as fast as Thunderbolt 3, um, 300 watt power supply. So you're going to be putting kind of weaker um, sort of single slot, probably not very powerful graphics cards. You're probably looking at something like the um, 460 on the AMD side or 560 if you're so inclined and uh, probably an NVIDIA 1050 as uh, the cards that are probably going to be maxing this thing out. Um, so not, you know, not going to be running some crazy parts in here. And also you got to remember that these are pretty expensive um, units over here. So now there's a bunch of other ones in here. Uh, one of the cheapest ones is actually the Aikido node, which, you know, kind of ranges between 250 to 200 bucks, depending on where you get it. And one of the reasons why I like this one so much is because of its dimensions. It's very small, you know, it can use Thunderbolt 2 or Thunderbolt 3. But again, you know, you're going to be limited to that. Um, there are a couple of Mac solutions for those of you folks that want to give your Mac, you know, a little bit of um, an oomph. Now you can go to this, uh, this link right here, and I'll also drop it in the description below so you can take a look at those solutions. But what happens if your laptop doesn't have a USB-C port? Well, are you out of luck? And the answer is no. There are a number of different solutions. 
And one of the ones, and you will have to do the legwork on this yourself, unfortunately, is whether or not you have an M.2 port or multiple M.2 ports. And the reason why this is pretty important is because it will basically determine the speed at which this graphics card is going to be running. And it's also going to determine um, a little bit of what sort of, you know, hardware you're going to need to buy to get your laptop up and running. Now, in some cases, the M.2 um, slot that you have on your computer may potentially be whitelisted. And what that basically means is that it won't allow anything other than, say, an SSD in there or a specific expansion card. So if you're trying to put something like this in there, it might not work. So my recommendation for those of you guys going with this kind of method is that you generally want to check online, see if somebody else has done it before, you know, see if there's a whitelist. Um, because that'll kind of determine whether or not you can actually get this up and running. Now, M.2 is not the end of it either. If you happen to have a computer such as myself that uses an MPCIe slot, this is very common nowadays. Typically, a Wi-Fi card is going to be sitting in this slot. Now, I originally made the mistake of buying uh, one of those GPU risers, which happens to just use a regular um, PCI um, connector, which was a PCI-1X. And it turns out that the PCI-1X is significantly fatter than the MPCIe connector. Now, no surprise there, but me being the idiot that I was, I ended up purchasing one of those and then returning it, um, you know, realizing too late that it's not actually going to work for my needs. So most of your laptops, especially if they're older laptops, are probably going to use this kind of connector. Um, this also means that, unfortunately, you're going to be limited to speeds of 5 gigabits. So it's not exactly very fast. Um, there are MPCIe versions that ultimately convert it to USB 3, which basically ends up running at the same speed. So if you think that somehow it being USB 3 makes it a ton slower, it actually really doesn't. Um, you're still not going to be getting, you know, times 4, times 8, or times 16 lane speeds. But for the most part, it's enough to actually push um, out all the graphics horsepower that you need. Um, you know, you typically aren't going to be bandwidth limited and most likely the games that you're going to be playing on a laptop are not necessarily going to be, you know, texture heavy games that need to stream large worlds because if there are, you're going to get a bunch of lag and the card is not going to perform optimally. Now, some folks may also have this thing called an express card. Usually this is where there's a slot on your laptop that's rectangular where you'd put in a network card, um, additional USB ports, and so on. This will operate at pretty much the same speed as the MPCIe, so no worries about speed loss there. And again, this makes it convenient because you actually don't have to open your laptop to put this thing in and get it up and running. Now, unfortunately for the MPCIe cable, chances are it could be under your keyboard or you may have to open the back of your laptop to get to it and potentially remove the um, basically mini PCIe cards that are in there. And again, just like with the MSATA adapters, you've run into the issue of whitelists. So you can potentially get stuck um, you know, at this step, but luckily for us, there's actually a program called Do-It-Yourself eGPU Setup. Um, now you can buy it from this guy here on his website, and it basically helps you set things up when you run into problems of whitelists. It generally helps kind of unlock some things for you and walks you through all the steps um, to get everything set up. And there are a number of YouTube tutorials to actually let you know um, how to get this going. I may actually end up using this for my laptop build. We'll see how the setup goes. But I'm just letting you guys know that this is a way um, to set everything up should you run into issues using one of these adapters. But of course, we're not quite done yet. You know, there are a number of different solutions out there that you can buy from this specific site, which is hwtools.net. Um, they've got a number of different adapters that you can purchase. Um, one of the coolest ones that I've seen on their site is actually this one, which has the power supply already included. You can slot the card right in there. Um, typically, these are going to be single slot cards. You could probably push your luck and put in, you know, something a little bit beefier, but you may need to upgrade the power supply at that point. As you can see, this one uses the express card interface. So again, it's very plug and play. Um, you will probably need to uninstall the current drivers that you have and possibly disable your graphics card to get it going. But the nice thing here is that they also can um, include this nice adapter, which again means that all you have to carry around is this little box on the adapter to get your GPU up and running, which is quite convenient because these are a lot smaller than any of the ones that I've showed you guys earlier um, that have a bunch of different boxes, you know, that are quite hefty. Now, 
you may have to carry two boxes as opposed to one, but nonetheless, it tends to work pretty well in general. But moving on to my build, you know, I figured I'd show you guys what um, I'm doing and which one I bought. So I bought this EXP GDC um, external video card adapter. This is really popular on YouTube. Um, this one's the mini PCIe version because that's what my laptop has. And I'm going to be testing that out with my laptop to see if there's a whitelist. If there happens to be a whitelist, I'm going to be using this program to see if I can get around it. If not, I'll try and look and see if it's possible for me to mod the BIOS on the laptop. Otherwise, I may, may run into some issues there. But it is what it is. You know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Now, I also found a very nice, much cheaper version of the M.2 adapter on AliExpress, which you can have for approximately $109. Um, shipping can be whatever you set it to, so as opposed to paying for one of these, which if I recall costs somewhere about 180, you're saving yourself approximately 80 bucks, which is, you know, a pretty good price for, you know, for one of these. And it just so happens that, you know, this brand is pretty well known. Um, I've, I've seen a lot of videos on this one. I've seen a lot of people actually, you know, kind of use this one and have it work pretty much right out of the box. But again, you know, with this sort of setup, you're going to have a power supply that connects to these six pin Molex connectors. And that makes it a bit of a pain um, because you have a bunch of different boxes. It's definitely very cluttersome unless you put it into an enclosure. And I'll be talking about enclosures in my next video. I'm not going to touch on that um, for this video today, but I am going to show you guys um, some of these things that I bought for my laptop to get it up and going. Um, as soon as Amazon decides to be nice and loads here, which may be quite a while. So one of the things that I did is because my laptop had a standard SATA 3 um, SSD, I actually ended up getting um, this little adapter, which would allow me to mount um, an M.2 SSD in there, which, as you can see, significantly cuts down on the size that is now in my laptop, netting me more space to put in the external GPU. Now. I also ended up getting this little uh, mobile SATA to regular SATA adapter to help power the card. I'm going to see if this is going to be enough. This will be connecting in place of my DVD drive to allow me to effectively um, use the GPU that way without potentially having a power supply. We'll see if this ends up working out, um, but uh, it is what it is. This is the card that I'll be using. Um, I have a GT740 or GTM740 in my computer right now. So this will be just a little bit faster. It's only a two gig card. And uh, the primary reason why I got it is because it's got these tiny ports that don't stick out. And I can actually easily remove this connector, the chassis connector to make it even less um, small. Unfortunately, as it turned out, even though it is a very small card, as you can see, the profile is quite tiny. This cooler right here is actually just tall enough to not clear the inside of my case. So I ended up actually going back and getting one of these little copper heat sinks, um, which is only nine millimeters in height, as opposed to the 12 millimeter heat sink that is on the GPU right now. So it shaves off about three millimeters. Hopefully that'll give me just enough clearance to make it work. Also, since it's a copper heat sink as opposed to aluminum, it means it's going to dissipate heat a lot better. And I'm going to be using a couple of small laptop fans that I have lying around to cool the whole thing down. Now, we're not quite done there just yet, as I've also had to purchase one of these. Now, you may be wondering, why the heck would you purchase one of these things? And this is basically an extender cable. And one of the biggest reasons for me purchasing this thing is that, as it turned out, the adapter that I'm using... I can't put the card into it vertically because my laptop is going to be lying horizontally. So as it turned out, I needed something that I could plug into it to run the cable um, basically in a horizontal fashion to allow my card to mount in there. Now, this isn't actually the one I got. It turned out that this one was a little bit too tall. The one that I ended up buying is actually the Syntec cable, which is a little bit shorter, and it's also not quite as tall, which allows it to mount inside of my laptop much more perfectly. So as opposed to getting this longer thermal take, I got a much smaller one. Now, I also got this at PV at 300 watt power supply. It's really tiny. It's really flexible. It allows me to basically mount this thing wherever I want in whatever kind of tiny case. Um, to get the whole thing sorted, I shorted some of the pins on here using the paperclip trick, which allows me to turn it on and off. I would have preferred having an on-off button on the power supply itself, but it is what it is. This is going to help power the card just in case the little adapter I told you guys about earlier doesn't end up working out for me. We'll see how it goes. Um, I have good things that I'm thinking about this power supply working. Um, it's plenty enough for the card that I'm using, and it's also very easy to stuff into a bag if I'm traveling. Now, 
I also ended up purchasing one of these risers, which will allow me to put my card vertically, instead of vertically, I'm sorry, it will allow me to put the card horizontally to allow mounting inside of very small chassis. And I'm looking at a number of um, enclosures right now, and I'll do a different video on that once I get that all set up. But this means that I won't have the card sticking out, you know, entirely vertically, allowing me to basically put it into much tighter enclosures than otherwise possible. And then ultimately, this was one of the um, units that I bought. As you can see, this was the mistake that I made, which is buying this PCIe adapter. As you can see, that's not an MPCIe slot. It is a PCIe one, so it doesn't actually quite fit. But these risers are quite perfect for going into laptops just because they are able to fit much easier. And you can get them with different connectors. Sometimes they come with a USB 3. Um, sometimes it's a different one. Occasionally, instead of the Molex connector, they have a six pin or they may have a different connector altogether. Um, typically, they have this little SATA um, power connector that just plugs right into a power supply. Now, ultimately, I ended up purchasing one of these because, as you can see, this one has MPCIe. The issue with this one for me is that it just so happens to have this little USB slot, which may actually interfere with other laptop components. So I'm looking around to see if I can get an adapter that's much more flat so that I can easily adapt it into my case without it actually hitting anything. So hopefully, you know, this kind of explains how this all works. There are a ton of setup tutorials out there on, you know, exactly how it is that you hook all of these up. Now I'll be doing a full in-depth setup review once I get all my components in and I'll put my laptop um, with the eGPU um, completely set up and I'll show you guys exactly how I did it. But this is a quick overview of the different adapters that are available to you guys, the software that you can use. And hopefully, you know, some of it makes sense as for how you use it and as well as also the options that you have for getting your laptop up and running with these um, different adapters. There's tons of them out there tons of different information, tons of different connections, and chances are, you know, you can make all of this work for your specific needs. So hopefully this kind of helped you folks sort out what sort of adapters are available for your machine, um, you know, what sort of software and what sort of tools you would need to get it all up and running. And again, like I said, I'll be making a follow-up to this video once I've actually got my laptop up and running, and once I have some more commentary to show you in regards to the casing and enclosures that you can put your graphics card into. So until next time.